Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living God, we just want to bless your holy name tonight. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be in your presence tonight. We are not taking it for granted. We just want to glorify you for all you've done in our lives. We are saying thank you as we go into our praises and worship. Father, accept our thanks, accept our worship, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. We give you love, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you Lord, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful, you are worthy, O oh Lord, you are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. We give you, Lord, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you, Lord, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful, you are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful, you are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful, you are worthy, O oh Lord. Thy wonderful name. Jesus, the wonderful name. Jesus, the wonderful name. Jesus, there is no other name I know. The wonderful, the wonderful name, oh yeah, Jesus, oh yeah, the wonderful name, Jesus, that's wonderful name, Jesus, there is no other name I know. All other gods, they are the works of men. You are the only God. There is none like all other gods, all other gods. They are, they are the works of men. You are, you are the only God. My God, there is none like. With the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to the New Heart Christian Ministries, a Bible-believing Christian family church, where we pray, sing, worship, express love, fellowship, discuss scripture and where we are constantly experiencing the diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. 
uh, praise Jesus. We thank Almighty God for uh, giving us the grace to come before you this evening, this morning, this afternoon, whatever time you are watching this program. This is uh, New Heart Christian Ministries and we are broadcasting from Basildon in the United Kingdom. Praise God. We thank God Almighty God for today. So before we move on this uh, this particular time, please let us uh, bow our head wherever we are to pray. Praise God. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord, this to days. Jehovah God Almighty, we thank you for the grace accorded us to come and share your word today. Let your power of knowledge and understanding rest upon us in Jesus' name. Our Father, the way maker and the promise keeper, your word that sets the captive free, your word that set the bondage free, your word that heals and redeems, your word that accomplishes and heals, your word that is life and spirit. Teach us today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, O oh Lord, Father, I ask for your Holy Spirit to descend upon me and teach through me in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jehovah God Almighty. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Uh, hello, everyone, and Calvary greetings. Wherever you are watching uh, this program, may the peace of the Lord be upon you and all that are yours. Uh, in Jesus' name. Um, we thank all our uh, friends on Facebook and outside Facebook and on YouTube as well. Those people have been supporting uh, this program. We thank you so much for uh, all you are doing. We thank you for your likes, for your comments, for your advices. We thank you for everything you have been doing to make uh, this program possible each day. May the Lord bless you as you are doing so in the name of Jesus Christ. May you not lack any good thing in your life in the name of Jesus. Today is a different day. And this is time with God. On this time with God, our Bible study, we just teach the word of God. Praise God. We just uh, teach the word of God. We just share the word of God. And on the, this program, you can ask questions. You just post your uh, your question uh, under this video. You can ask questions. And if we are able to answer it before the uh, program ends, then we are going to do that. And if not, um, by the following week, next week, when I'm coming again, I'll bring the answer to you. Praise God. I went to our weekly Bible study, uh, Time with God. Okay, this is a time to spend uh, some personal time with God in studying His Word. Um, the Word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 119, verse 105 says. Praise God. Um, before we go on today, uh, there's a couple of announcements I, I would like to make. If I mention um, uh, this evening, please bear with me. Because the time we are broadcasting this program is evening. So if I say this evening, it's because here it's evening time. Okay, it, with you over there, it may be morning, it may be afternoon, it may be night. Just bear with me. I may say that or I, I may not say that. Just I just need to mention this. And um, I also, if you have any question, uh, you can post it uh, on, in the chat, chat timeline under this video. Praise God. Any question you have, which is related to this particular program we are doing at the moment, please post it under this video and I will uh, try to answer before uh, the end of the program. Today I'll be talking about some verses in the Bible that are misconstrued or misinterpreted. They were given different interpretation of meaning. Okay, sometimes one person says a word from the Bible and give us his own version of uh, the interpretation. And we just grab it without checking if it is true or false. Because the person is a teacher of the word or a preacher. Uh, what you do is we believe everything uh, people tell us on the, on the pupil. Some of us are not like Berean Christians. Or oh, uh, these people are mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 11. That particular verse says, Now the Berean Jews were of noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. They received the word, but not in a rush to, grab, to just grab it, anything anyone throws at them. They will make note, they will go home and examine the scriptures 
for instance, um, when we were told, when we were growing up, we were told that seven hallelujahs fell the word of Jericho. Some of us grew up with that. Uh, so the children of Israel just shouted seven hallelujahs and the wall of Jericho just fell. To the extent that some musicians, both in the uh, within the gospel and secular sectors, uh, sang it in their music, saying seven hallelujahs destroyed the wall of Jericho. The Bible did not teach us that. One, no word like hallelujah was used in that victory. In Joshua chapter 6, this is what the Lord said to Joshua from verse 3 to verse 5. God said, um, God said unto them, as a march around the city once with all the armed men, do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of rams on in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priest blowing the trumpet. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpet, have the whole army give a loud shout, a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up everyone straight in. Praise God. The total circular journey around the city was more than seven. If you have to count the first, seven, the first six days. And the shout was only noise, and no word was said, and the world fell. That's what the Lord said to them. Just shout. Yay! And, and the world will fall. But what we have been told uh, when we were young was that they shouted seven hallelujahs. Uh, that, that wasn't anything like hallelujah. This is one of the things that we just need to correct ourselves to see that we don't start to teach people um, what is not in the scriptures. Praise God. There are some there are some words or teaching that have passed from generations to generations that seem from the Bible, but which are not. I'm not sure if we are going to have time to treat um, many of these today, but we are going to try as much as possible, maybe one or two. Um, if we can teach on that, that will be fine. Okay, we'll be pointing out all these um, errors so that we can learn from it. We need to know all these little things. There are little, little things. It doesn't actually matter if, if it was just a shout or sh shout of seven hallelujahs. But it's important for us to know for our own personal knowledge and just in case someone asks a question on it. So let us try to teach people according to what the Bible says and not to twist or add our own word to it. But in every faculty of learning, and this includes theology, there is something called exegesis. And hermeneutics. They both have their meanings uh, respectively at a place in the study of religion. Okay. Exegesis is defined as a critical explanation or interpretation of a text, especially of scripture, a critical academic approach to biblical scripture. While hermeneutics is defined as a branch of knowledge that deals with interpretation, especially um of the Bible or literary text. Exegesis is an approach and hermeneutics is the interpretation. Just to cut it, to make it simpler like that. Okay. How you approach a sentence and how you interpret it is very important. And if a right word is interpreted wrongly, there may be a consequence. Okay. What God said to Moses in the book of Numbers chapter 20 Okay, was that speak on the rock and water will flow out. Moses got to the rock. Okay, Moses got to the rock and hit it with his rod. Because of what uh, because of that, he never got to the promised land. Speak and hit are not the same. The Bible does not condemn speaking in tongues. That's another example. Apostle Paul only advised that if you cannot interpret what you are saying, or there is no interpreter around to interpret for you. What is the purpose of you speaking in front of the people in a language they don't understand? Praise God. Okay? It is advisable that you keep quiet or speak to yourself. But some churches have actually banned speaking in tongues in their churches. This is not right. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can't ban it. Praise God. 
One thing is the spirit to say a word and another thing is for the hearer to write it down word for word. Okay, another, another is, um, is one reading the scripture and another is in understanding and interpreting it correctly. Misconception or misconstrued could be caused where God is saying some, one thing in the Bible and the reader is turning it into something else completely. Praise God. We need to understand all these kind of things. They are very, 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 very important. The Bible has come a long way in actual fact. From one interpretation to another interpretation. Hebrew language is believed to be the first and the original biblical language. And from there, it was transla uh, translated to Greek. Today, the Bible has got over 700 languages and still doing great. Why do we have to say this? Along the line, the thing's interpretation may not be the same as the original. The verse of the Bible that we'll be talking about today is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 16, it says, A man's gift makes room for him and brings, brings him before great men. Praise God. The general interpretation of this particular verse which I have heard from many outstanding preachers and owners of all this are that the gift in you as in skills or talent will make a way for you. That has been the general interpretation. Even I know of a well-known preacher and a teacher who even published it on the in internet. He interpreted this verse as God has put a gift or talent in every person that the world will make room for. It is this gift that will enable you to fulfill your vision. It will make a way for you in life. It is in exercising this gift that we find real fulfillment, purpose, and contentment in your work. That is what that uh, preacher said on the internet. I too have been quoting this verse and when the Holy Spirit pointed this error to me a few days ago, I couldn't just believe what I was seeing. To be honest with you, it took my surprise. I then started going through other versions of the Bible. They all use the word gift without substituting it with any other word. Okay. Now, what various versions of the Bible do is explaining each verse of the Bible the way they want people to understand it uh, better. So when you go to King James versions or New King James version, it's going to be the same verse, but the way they are going to say it is going to be different. New Living Standard, all these versions, they, 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 they write out their own uh, verses of the Bible differently so that they can uh, create a clear understanding for the reader. Okay, But in this particular verse, this particular uh, uh, respect, the, the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16, the word gift is what all of them used in this book of Proverbs. Okay, they use gift true, they didn't substitute it. If they have meant skills, probably they could have used knowledge, natural ability, or endowment, and so on as, as a substitute for that particular word gift. But they didn't. This verse was actually referring to gift in this context as in giving. Some verses of the Bible ended the verse with the giver, giving it the right meaning. Just to let you understand that. The gift here is not about the skills you have in yourself, but about you giving out to people. For instance, the new, the new international version says that a gift opens the, uh, open the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. A new living translation says, giving a gift can open doors. It gives access to important people. Giving a gift. The amplif amplified uh, version says that a man's gift or given in love or custody makes room for him and brings him before great men. Okay. Good news translation says that do you want to meet an important person? Take a gift and it will be easy. The God's Word version says that a gift opens doors for the one who gives it and brings him into the presence 
of great people. Can you say that all of them they are using gift? So what this particular verse is saying is that if you are a giver, you will always find favor and doors will always be opening for you to meet people of importance, great men. It is not actually encouraging bribery that you can buy your way to anywhere. No, it's not saying that. Praise God. And if you have been using this verse as gift, as mentioned in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 6, which says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. You may have been doing it incorrectly. Gift in this instance is giving, not skills, not knowledge. But having said that, if you are using it ordinarily, that uh, a gift of man will make a way for him, you could be right as well. We can see what gift did for Joseph in front of Pharaoh and Daniel in front of King Nebuchadnezzar to the extent that King Nebu, as powerful as he was, paying homage to Daniel. A slave. Daniel was a slave in exile. King Nebuchadnezzar was a very powerful king. And all that, that an offering of incense be presented to Daniel. The king said to Daniel, Your God is truly the God of gods and Lord of kings, the revealer of mysteries, since you are able to reveal this mystery. That is what a gift can uh, do for you. We, we, some of us will remember what actually happened um, between Joseph and Pharaoh. Okay. Pharaoh had a dream. He wanted someone to come and interpret it uh, for him. But there wasn't anyone that, can, that, that could do it. And we could remember that Joseph was in the prison when they called him out. Because before that time, he, has actually, he had actually interpreted a particular dream for one of the uh, prisoners. And what, what, he, what he actually um, uh, interpreted, that, that thing uh, came true. So when, he, when that uh, prisoner was leaving the prison, Joseph said to him that, please don't forget me. But when the man got out, he forgot about Joseph until when Pharaoh now had a dream. That was two years later. And uh, no one could tell Pharaoh about the dream. No one could interpret the dream for Pharaoh. But then it is this, a butler now remembered Joseph and said, Ah, I've done something wrong. And he said to Pharaoh, This is what happened when I was in the um, prison. And Joseph was called out. And uh, when Pharaoh told Joseph what... Um, the, the dream he had, uh, Joseph interpreted the dreams and uh, Pharaoh said, okay, thank you for the uh, interpretation of the dream. Who else can be in the position you just suggested? It could be you. So Joseph was actually made prime minister from prison to prime minister. That was what gift can do to you. Praise God. Okay. That is the gift. But that wasn't the uh, gift that these... Um, particular book of proverbs is saying now in, in the areas of in, in, in the life of daniel daniel too was about to be killed with all the people with all the uh, magicians in the country because they couldn't tell king nebuchadnezzar the dream he had king nebuchadnezzar had actually requested that he had a dream he could remember that dream but he was just telling them you people you that you say you are powerful tell me that dream that the dream I had, tell me, and tell me the interpretation. Ah, those people said, King, who can do that? This one can only be done by God, and it doesn't live among men. We can't do that. We can't tell you the dream you had. If you have told us the dream, we will tell you the interpretation. God was, uh, the, the, the king was furious. He said, go and kill all of them. And Daniel was a monk. So when Daniel heard that, king said they should kill all of them. Kill all of them. He said, ah, why should a king issue such a harsh um, direction? And they said, can I see the king? They said, okay, why not? They took him to the king. And uh, he asked the king, why? And the king said to him that, listen, I had a dream. What I want them to do is that you all people that you say you have knowledge, go, come and tell me the dream I had. Okay, and the interpretation. Ah, that let's say nobody can, nobody can do this. To tell you the dream you had. Ah. Yeah, Leo. So now what happened was that Daniel now said to the king and said, uh, please give me uh, one day. I will go and actually, uh, I will come back to you tomorrow 
and give you the interpretation. Okay, the king said, you can go. Daniel left. He went home, called Nebuchadnezzar, no, sorry, called uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and said, listen, we have a problem there. Okay. The king has said, we have to, we have to come up with the dreamy heart and the interpretation. So he prayed to God and overnight, God showed him the dream and the inter interpretation. He woke up and he remembered the dream and the interpretation vividly. You know, sometimes you woke up in the morning and you forget your dream. Daniel didn't uh, uh, forget this one. So he was asked to be taken to the king. And he went to the king and told the king step by step the dream he had. And after telling him the dream he had, they now told the king the interpretation. Okay. Um, king Nebuchadnezzar couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe what he had. He, pro he prostrated for Daniel. We can also see around us um, what various pe uh, people's gifts are doing for them in the area of sport, music, artistic, writings, and so on. Their gift is actually making way for them, but this is not what Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 says. Praise God. And another area worth looking into is this uh, book of Isaiah chapter 4 which is the continuation of Isaiah chapter 3, where God uh, pronounced judgment on the women of Jerusalem. Praise God. This verse is simply about the women in Jerusalem, and if it is happening at any other time or in any other nation, that is fine. But this, is, this was about women in Jerusalem specifically. What many teachers and preachers have been doing is using... Uh, this particular verse that at a later age numbers of women will be clinging to one man for marriage. People have been using this as a prophecy for the whole world, but this is not the case. Praise God. In the book of Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1 says that in that day seven women will take hold of one man and say we will eat our own bread and provide our own clothes. Just let us be called by your name. Take our disgrace. Okay. This implies that there will be scarcity of men and women will be forced to force themselves uh, on uh, one man. Uh, this looks so scary. Okay. So let us look at some verses before this one, before chapter 4. In chapter 3, of the book of Isaiah from verses 16 to 17 it reads because the daughters of Zion are haughty walking with her eye and wanting eyes prancing and skipping as they go jiggling the bracelet on their ankles the Lord will bring source on the earth of the daughters of Zion and the Lord will make their foreheads bare the verses referenced here are for the daughters of Zion. If there's going to be a case like this for the world, in general, those verses are not about that. This continued in chapter 4. Praise God, this continued in chapter 4. Okay. What can I say is, please read your Bible. Don't rely only on what you hear from the pulpit. Make note, do your own research, ask the Spirit of God to teach you and give you a sound understanding. Bible, the only Bible is not a, like a novel or like any other book that you can read on, and understand straight away sometimes without the Spirit of God. That is why many are interpreting it wrongly and confusing many. Look at that um, Ethiopian eunuch in the book of Acts chapter 8. That Philip went to meet on the, uh, the desert who was reading the Bible but couldn't understand what he was reading until Philip explained to him. Praise God. My dear brothers and sisters, my fathers and mommies in the Lord, please read your Bible. Maybe you don't know that some words in some versions of the Bible, especially in the New Testament, have been removed for some reasons. They've taken them out. And the reasons are best known to those people who did that. 
Okay. Uh, verses like Matthew 17, 21. Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 17, verse 21. That says, I'll bet this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. That one has been removed from some uh, versions of the Bible. And Matthew 18, verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. So, all this one has been removed. So, we need to be reading our Bible uh, we're asking Holy Spirit to teach us the scriptures. Anyway, thanks so much. That is all I have for you this week. We are back on Friday for our Friday prayer meeting at 7 p.m. UK time and on Sunday for our Sunday devotional service at 10 a.m. Okay, UK time. Please, 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 we plead. Help us share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel on YouTube. Please, when you get to YouTube, just search for New Heart Christian Ministries. And the Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for this particular teaching. We thank you that you have spoken. Almighty God, let everything we learn today be part of our lives in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I commit all those people under my voice at this present time before you, Father, minister to them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jehovah God Almighty. In the name of Jesus Christ, I've prayed. Amen. Praise God. Thanks so much for joining me this evening um, or this morning, whatever time you're actually uh, watching this program. And I thank you so much. Hope you join us on Friday for our prayer meeting and from at 7 p.m. UK time and on Sunday for our uh, Sunday morning, uh, Sunday service. Please, if um, free, please join us and the Lord bless you as you do so. The next time when I come your way again, remember it. With the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to the New Heart Christian Ministries, a Bible-believing Christian family church, where we pray, sing, worship, express love, fellowship, discuss scripture and where we are constantly experiencing the diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit.